And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Insight on Business. My name is Michael Libby. It's powered by our advertising agency, Insight Advertising, Marketing, and Communications, being brought to us by our friends at Fuersa, tax and accounting professionals that'll work hard for you until the cows come home. Well, looking to win more Hollywood dollars, Twitter has done something relatively remarkable. Uh, Twitter has hired Jennifer Prince, uh, formerly of Google, uh, Google's head of entertainment, and she's going to be moving over to Twitter to do what? Well, to engage more money from Hollywood. This is an interesting story. Here's an image of Jennifer Prince, who is now uh, going to be working for uh, Twitter. And, and this is an important story because what it does, it takes a look at what's going on behind the scenes with something that's so interesting uh, in the business side of Twitter. All entertainment brands are working with Twitter, uh, but they're just scratching the service. surface, says Prince. Over the next few months, she plans to hire a sales team, now get this, to widen Twitter's coverage of movies and TV and possibly expand into the video business game. As director of entertainment industry sales, Prince is going to be promoting Twitter as the social soundtrack that can enhance marketing of TV shows and pictures. Uh, Twitter sells promoted tweets, and last month, debuted a TV ad targeting products that pushes specific sponsored messages in real time to users who appear to be following specific shows. This is, this is huge. No longer do you have to search out products. The products are going to be searching out you. In addition, the Twitter Amplify uh, initiative lets media partners sell ad video clips embedded with tweets. And this fall, company plans to launch the Nielsen Twitter TV rating in partnership with Nielsen, aims to provide metrics reflecting shows social engagement. Now, hiring away a top exec from an even bigger tech titan, which it competes for ad dollars, is just the latest sign of what Twitter's hoping to do and perhaps perhaps plan an IPO sometime next year. The company is on track to generate $950 million in global ad revenue in 2014. It's a pretty interesting story when you stop and think about it, how Twitter is going to attempt to attract uh, Hollywood people. I mean, already the millions of users who are on Twitter are tweeting about TV shows that they're watching. They're tweeting about movies that they're going to see. Well, why not generate some ad revenue? And that's exactly what Jennifer Prince's job is going to do at Twitter. Yeah, this stuff is just a fad, right? Is $15 the new normal for minimum wage? Well, it could be if you live in Seattle. Here's what $15 looks like in your pocket. The state of Washington already has the nation's highest state minimum wage rate at $9.19 an hour. Now there's a push in Seattle, at least, to make it 15 bucks. That would mean fast food workers, retail clerks, baristas, and other minimum wage workers would get what protesters demanded when they shut down a handful of city restaurants in May, and others called for when they demonstra demonstrated nationwide in July. So far, the city council and mayoral candidates have said they'll consider it in a famous liberal city, of course. One said, however, it may not be soon. Venture capitalist, listen to this, venture capitalist Nick Hanser said there's no time to waste. What the nation needs is money in the hands of regular consumers. A quote, a higher minimum wage is a very simple and elegant solution to the death spiral of falling demand that's a signature feature of our economy. Some business advocates say a minimum wage hike will make it harder for companies in Seattle to survive. They cite Walmart, which has all but refused to accept a Washington, D.C. decision to raise the minimum wage to $12.50 an hour in big box stores. Now, a higher minimum wage estimate eliminates low-wage jobs because it's how small business cuts costs and ends up hurting the people it's supposed to benefit. Now, that according to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. And get this, in Seattle at least, and this is a beautiful photograph of Seattle, and more than 15 million workers own the na or earn the national minimum wage, making about $15,080 a year. That's $50 below the federal poverty line for a family of two. San Francisco currently has the highest minimum wage of all workers at $10.50 an hour. Economists say that an increased minimum wage would improve the national economy because low-wage workers, get this, are more likely to spend the additional income on goods and services. Research also suggests a minimum wage increase to $15 only has a 4 to 5% effect on prices. So keep your eyes on what's going on 
in Seattle. When we come back, we've got some economic indicators that are coming out this week that could impact what's going on not only in the nation, but in your own backyard. A quick look at economic indicators when we come back. This is Insight on Business, the news hour. My name is Michael Libby, back with more right after this.